Thank you very much for doing this interview. I this is probably uh, it's turned into the kind of the favorite thing I do on my channel. I love talking about music with the people who create it. So uh, thanks for taking the time today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited, Steve. Uh, I guess first of all, if you could just um, I guess introduce yourself a little bit and uh, and talk about kind of how this whole thing got started. Yeah, absolutely. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zana, uh, Z-A-H-N-A. Um, I am a solo uh, rock artist, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've been a musician and a singer for a long time. Uh, starting in 2017, after being in several projects and bands, I decided to um, just kind of start my own thing and go solo. Uh, so some of you guys know me, I used to sing for a band called Ilya. Uh, I was their third and last singer and uh, before the disbandment. And kind of after that, I decided to just continue with music that I wanted to really just kind of put all of myself into a project, um, you know, something that was really genuine from my heart and something that allowed me to kind of just explore um, different styles of music, kind of like get the reins in my own hands to just kind of really, really express myself as uh, genuinely as possible. So yeah, that's me, guys. Um, the name Susana comes from my full name which, in Spanish, which is Susana. And yes, I'm a bilingual artist. I sing in Spanish and in English. So uh, that's where that name comes from. Awesome. Well, yeah, I saw that you just, uh, was it just a new single released in Spanish, I believe? Yeah, so it was actually um, a song that was already in English on my debut record, Red for War. Uh, the song underneath, we went ahead and uh, translated it and re-recorded it in Spanish, and I did a new video for it as well. So yeah, you guys can check that out. That's my latest release. Yeah. Very cool. So let's talk about your sound a little bit um, and how it kind of, I guess, evolved from your previous work into what it is now. What uh, what did you want to change up? What did you find that you were doing a little bit differently for your solo work? Um, really, I guess. I mean, it's kind of. I mean, really, the sounds just more change because of who you work with, like who your producers are and stuff. But I guess this record was a little more angry. <laughs> I didn't really know if I meant to do that. It was just the most honest interpretation at the time of what I was feeling at that moment. Um, you know, and so it's a little more heavy. Uh, the style changed a little bit. Um, actually, my roots are very much in a singer songwriter. Uh, you know, I, I would just like write songs and guitar and then take them to producers. While this solo record was a little different because um, I really like just kind of sent ideas over not really full songs and they kind of like expanded in the writing room and stuff like that so um with different writers comes different styles um I honestly didn't know that this album was even going to be a full-length album at the time I was just writing an EP and I was like I don't really care I'm just gonna like you know write whatever I want and I didn't expect it to like get picked up by a record label or anything uh and so it was kind of a surprise I think I think if I knew it was gonna be on a record label I probably would have changed some stuff about it uh, but I still love it I mean it's still a genuine work of art uh and it's really honest with everything I was feeling so it writing that album was a really big healing process for me transitioning from uh from a band setting transitioning from you know several years of being in a band into you know uh mm -hmm. processing the ending of that and then also kind of going through a health crisis at the same time um where i was diagnosed with the disease that i never ever imagined i would have um to just this crazy crazy journey that i was on for those two years uh b before this album came out um so yeah it was uh, just a really big healing process i think so I'm guessing that a lot of the lyrics are uh, on this album are, are very personal to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I can write dishonest lyrics anymore. I'm just like, I, I don't know. I mean, as a, definitely as a solo artist, like if you're not writing your own lyrics, then why are you even a solo artist? Like, I don't. I mean, you if you're if you're just taking songs written by other people, like you'd be a performer. But to be an artist is a craft. You know, you have to be able to express yourself in a way that is poetry you know so I think that's always been my strongest suit to write um write writing lyrics ever since I was little uh my teachers were always like oh you're like really gonna be a good writer one day 
and that didn't translate to like essays and stuff but like you know like schoolwork I just did not care I was just get this assignment out I don't care but when it came to music I just oh I could just write lyrics for days and days and days so yeah <laughs> So did you discover then early on that you could actually sing too? And I, you said you play guitar. So um, was the writing kind of the first thing to develop and then everything else came out around it? Absolutely. I mean, when I was little, like my sisters were in music lessons. Like my dad put, put them in like piano lessons and singing lessons. And I was like, ew, I never want to do that. And the reason was is because I'd go to their lessons. I'd be like, they're just like playing someone else's song. This is so boring, you know? And I was like, this is lame. And little did I know I was going to be the musical one to grow up. Um, but it always stemmed from like, it has to be original. It has to be from the heart. So really my main, uh, main motivation and drive in music was to be like, I need to express myself. And uh, so writing really developed first in me. Like, I think, like, I was, like, seven years old when, like, I was just playing and I, like, heard this song come to my head. And just, like, I don't know where it came from. I was like, oh, I I'm going to write a song. I'm going to write these lyrics. And it was, like, called Patty Cake or something. I don't know, man. I was seven. Okay. <laughs> but it was, I still remember it to this day. And so, like, I just, um, I, I started doing, like, acting when I was little. And I loved the stage. And I knew that I loved live audiences. And I loved that energy. And I don't know, I was just always like in the, I was, you know, in the school plays, I always got a, a lead role, a speaking role. And that was really rare because the little kids would, wouldn't get those parts. Um, but, you know, because all the fifth graders would and stuff. But the little, you know, I would every year I'd land a, a land a lead spot. It was so cool, you know, as I was in elementary school. So, um, and those were musicals too. So um, I would always have to like have a singing part or I would have a whole song in the play, you know, and these were like big productions my school put on for all the parents. And so it was, um, I think that was really the start of my love for live performance, you know. And I was always like, oh, I want to be a uh, Broadway actress, you know? And that was always my goal until I got into high school and I started falling in love with like rock. And so when I was in high school, I, I got all my friends together and we started a band and we were in the high school battle of bands. And that's when I really started working in a band setting. So yeah, that's, it's a weird story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. I mean, it's, it's sometimes it takes a lot of learning and a lot of process to get where you're at. Uh, and I think if you ever stop learning, that's that's probably a problem. Yeah, absolutely. I'm still learning this day. I mean, even with the last record up till now, there's so many things I want to change and do differently with the next record. And there's nothing wrong with that, because I mean, there's people who love my first work with Ilya. There's people who love this record. And I'm, I'm already starting to write the next record, which I think is really going to be a strong album. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. But I, I can't wait to see kind of the feedback of people. Uh, and it's like something every artist is going to have to go through or like, oh, my fans don't like this release. I don't know. I just try to grow and be better. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Well, speaking of fans, I just want to tell you quickly, I think I told you before, um, the whole reason that I kind of even found you to begin with is somebody who is, uh, I guess, one of my subscribers, and they said, hey, love your interviews. Would you ever consider talking to Zana? And I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. That's so cool. Yeah. Thank you, fan. I don't know who you are, but thank you so much. <laughs> um, so uh, I actually like the, the nice, angry sound. I did listen to uh, Ilya, and uh, that was nice, too. I, I kind of like the, the darker Zana. I like... Um, just uh, there's something a little bit, uh, I don't want to say more real, because I'm sure the other stuff was real, too. But, um, you know, this feels more kind of from the soul. Um, and, and I just love, uh, I love your voice and the things that you can do with it. You can do that uh, kind of nice, clean, pretty thing with it. Uh, and then you throw that grit behind it and uh, that anger and you yell a little bit. And so how did you, um, do you kind of decide to switch back and forth between your vocal styles? Is it just kind of you're following your heart and the music there? It depends. Every song is different. I mean, if you listen to Red for War, like, 
um, Unshaken, my producer had already written that music and he showed me this song with no vocals. And I was like, dude, I want this song. Like, give me this song. Um, and I felt just like it was the perfect song to just like scream in defiance because I was I was just so angry at the time. <laughs> Um, but then like there's other songs where like I feel screaming is necessary not out of anger but out of pain you know and uh, Drown was one of the first songs we wrote too for that album and the beginning intro it just starts out with these heavy guitars and uh, it's well not in the radio version but in the album version uh, the first thing I scream is why and it, that that I like actually I kind of had to fight my label on that they're like they they're like well, we don't need screaming in the song I'm like yes we do you don't know the state of mind I was in when I wrote this like there is so much pain behind drown uh even when I play it live man I just like it just sinks in again all over again and it, it's really sad um but you know again um I only like to scream if it's appropriate if it means something because just mindless screaming like I think people can tell it's just annoying after a while. <laughs> I uh, actually, I've heard that somebody else that I had interviewed said the same thing. You know, there are a lot of people who like to scream or, or growl or throw that kind of stuff in there, but you really have to have a purpose for it or it is just another noise. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, man. And um, I mean, some like metal bands can pull it off, you know, but the music is good for it. Like, it's it's uh the song is leading somewhere it's not just like i don't know i don't know there it's definitely a style but um for me like i don't i i, I like i like the melodies too like i i love music and i think one day it'd be so fun to just be a metal screamer in a metal band it'd be so much fun but my art wouldn't come out in that you know as genuine because i'm just screaming my head off you know and there's beauty there's there's so much beauty and pain. There's so much beauty in words, you know, and you got to express that in the most accurate way you can, for me at least as a writer. Well, um, I, I guess I want to tell you, first of all, uh, I do love the album and uh, my favorite songs on the album, actually, uh, Unshaken. And I also love Misery. Those, I think, probably are my two favorites on the album. Awesome. Um, yeah, Misery is fun. I, that one gets stuck in my head. I actually sometimes just put on my record just to listen to Misery. I'm like, yeah, I feel like something groovy right now. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Do you have um, a favorite or a couple of favorites from the album? Um. Yeah, I mean, I really like Was I I don't know why more people don't talk about it. It's more like at the end of the record, which is probably why like their attention span just drops or something uh, by that point in the album. But um, I think musically, I really love that song. Uh, the melody is really beautiful. Um, and it's just the perfect balance of like heavy and melodic at the same time, which is like my favorite style. Um, but uh, I don't know, like it was... Uh, I had to scrap the whole first idea I had for Was I Bad. The chorus was going to be totally different. And I was like, man, this is just, when you just like get stuck, sometimes it's better to just throw away the whole idea. Let's just come up with something new. So I had to actually do that for this, for that song a couple of times for like the verses and the chorus. I just like, it wasn't going anywhere. And I, I had to pull out of myself like, okay, like do something you've never done before, you know, try something else. And that's really difficult for me because I'm really stubborn. Anybody you ha that has worked with me will tell you I'm extremely, I've gotten a lot better though, Steve. I'm telling you, I've gotten, I used to be really stubborn with ideas. I'm like, no, this is what we're doing. This is how it was written. And this is the emotion I'm going to communicate. Um, but you know, there's, it's, it's awesome when you are able to just like discard ideas and come up with something better. You might even surprise yourself how, how much better you can, you can write each time. Um, but Was I Bad is really fun. I never get tired of that song. I really like the mix, too. I, I love the mix of that song. Um, but again, like, I don't know, like, I would say Drown and Underneath were our, our lyrical masterpieces, I think. Not, not to be conceited or, like, to my own horn, but, like, I love the lyrics because, you know, when you're writing lyrics, it's not just like, here, let me tell you exactly what I mean point blank it's about painting a picture with visuals and metaphors and symbolism uh you know that is like the art of it and so with drown um the way the lyrics came out uh 
Well, only I would know, you know, the, the references in it. I'm not going to go into each and every little line that I put a reference in for, you know, who it's for. But basically, to, to paint a picture with symbolism and how drowning can be compared to a relationship and making those two kind of like symbolism, how, you know, when somebody deserts you or betrays you, leaves you to drown, um, the way that the lyrics are written in that chorus really accurately depicted what I wanted to say. Um, so, yeah, I really love Drown. Um, I love all of them, honestly, Steve. It's really hard to choose. <laughs> well, um, you know, sometimes it's easier for me to listen to an album and I have definite, definite favorites that stand out. But I feel like Red for War is pretty consistent the whole way through. Like, there isn't anything that I would just, like, skip skip you know as i'm driving or anything like that so um i, I guess that's probably a compliment i i think the album hey. is very listenable <laughs> the whole way through hey. no that's all, that's my goal as an artist i'm like no skip songs you know like and and, and also i'm and a lot of people are um some some artists are not like this but i really write for themes in the album so like you'll hear me repeat symbolisms from like one song to the next and that basically tells you they're connected um, they're about kind of the same situation. Um, it's kind of like chapters in a book, you know? And so uh, I like the continuity in albums, you know, which kind of, it kind of stinks now because a lot of people just go to like these streaming platforms and they only like pick their favorite song and they'll only add one song to the playlist. And it's like, dang, you know, like you're not getting the full picture of what I'm trying to say when you don't listen to the whole thing back to back. And even some of the songs are specifically in order to express a story, you know? So it, it stinks. But for the fans that really are interested, they will listen front to back and kind of hear the whole theme by the end of it. Well, I've got to tell you, I'm I'm an old school. I'm a CD guy. So yeah. I, I, I like to own the disc. And even if I, I, you know, download an album, I still like to pop it on a disc. So... <laughs> I have my digital stuff, and, and I'll use it when I need to, but I, I want to have that in front of me to listen to. Awesome, man. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I just It's so much easier, like, I don't know, than, like, shuffling through your phone and looking for something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, quickly, I want to talk about your video for Underneath. Um, so, you know, you with your big acting background... <laughs> <laughs> Was, was the video something that you really enjoyed? Do you look forward to making some more? Oh, yeah, man. Dude, I have ideas for music videos for days, man. It's just frustrating because it's like, well, you need a budget. You need to, like, have a release plan. And it's, it's a lot of work to, like, make a video and edit and money. It costs a lot of money, you know. Um, and there's not often a very large point of return unless you have um, millions and millions of views on it. But for me, when un when I was planning underneath, I literally had to write out every single thing that everything in that video symbolized for like these like news stations and stuff. And it's like an entire like everything is in that video for a reason. The colors, the 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 trees, the ink the treasure chest, the heart, like everything symbolizes something. And for underneath, I, I got a lot of, um, basically that whole song is based on scriptures that, um, that were about, um, you know, hiding from God and, and how God sees our motivations and knows our hearts every single day. Even if we're lying to ourselves, uh, you can't escape from his, um, his, from his eyes. And so, um, like the trees, for example, symbolize the scripture where it says, you know, uh, every tree that doesn't produce fruit will be cut off. Um, you know, and how the bare branches feels like someone inside who is holding on to sin because they are the bare branches, you know, um, how the ink symbolizes sin and like how the hands with the ink symbolize no one is, uh, no one is, is, has clean hands. We're all sinful. We all, uh, have committed offenses to God, towards God. Um, and then the heart in the treasure chest with the ink represents where, you know, um, the scripture in Matthew where it says where your uh, treasure is there, your heart will also be. Um, so how we put our selfishness and our desires above God causes our heart to sink into sin, you know, because that's where our treasure is. 
Um, so, man, I, I have a Bible degree. I could just talk about this for, for days, you know, but I'll just, that's enough, I think, for now. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, uh, do you have an idea of uh, maybe a next video, like your your dream scenario, or are you kind of waiting to, uh, maybe when the new music officially comes out? Yeah, I have a really awesome idea for one of the new songs that I'm uh, writing, and I think it's going to be, it's going to hit hard, man. It's 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 pretty sad. <laughs> Just like, geez, man, are people ready for this? <laughs> Um, but it's real, man. And it's like people are like, oh, your music is so good. You're blah, blah, blah. Like you're, you're really good at writing or whatever. I'm like, but you don't know the cost of what it takes to write these songs because all of this is based on real life and and really hard things that, you know, these artists have gone through. Um, so it's like the cost to write a song like you'll never know what it took to write that and, and I, I i mean i feel like the lord allows us to go through things um so that we can you know make art through it and help those who are struggling through it um but i i think for the next video i have a really strong idea that's going to be really impactful and make people really think about things so yeah it's almost like songwriting is writing little snippets of your own autobiography. Exactly. I, well, that's how I feel. <laughs> that's what I, I, I view it as, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, any uh, kind of secret you can give us about what the, the new album might sound like? You don't want to give anything away? Oh, man. You know, I haven't written enough yet to, like, really say anything about it, but I think that overall man I just got so much to say like it's been so long that I just I think it's gonna get really deep and there's like a lot of somber themes that I want to talk about uh but this record well the the record I have planned to release you know when it all boils down to like the labels involvement and everything um I don't know how much it changes but I know that I'm gonna have stuff to talk about for days and interviews <laughs> Um, really somber themes and really real, uh, really real stuff. Yeah. Well, we can definitely come back and talk about that when the album comes out. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in another one. I'd love to. I'd love to. I, I think I, I don't really have too much left to ask you about. I, generally, we talk about touring and live shows. But as we all know, right now, uh, everybody. I couldn't give you an answer yeah. on any of that. I'm sorry, man. I have. I'm stuck uh, planned at this point. It's looking like it's all going to fall through, even for summer. I really hope not. I haven't heard anything about my stuff falling through. But um, again, it just, yeah, it really, really is not cool what's happening. It's very sad. So sad. I have so many concert tickets already that I bought <laughs> for shows <laughs> this summer. And I'm just waiting to see what's going to get picked off here and there. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Yeah, my, my tour got middle, in the, right in the middle, got canceled. And uh, we did four dates, but I was really bummed because all our Texas dates were about to come up and I am from Texas. So that's like my market right there. And everything got pulled, man. And I was like, no. <laughs> and it was my first headlining tour as well. So you can imagine. I was really, really sad. Yeah. <laughs> well, things will things will eventually come around and uh, everybody will get back. I think everybody will be really hungry to get out and see shows and do things like that when Relax. I hope so. I and I just hope it's safe because you know, like, man, I, I can relate. Like, I've been in the hospital. I have been in just horrible pain in a hospital bed, uh, and it. I, my heart is breaking for the people that have this disease. I'm more sad about people dying from this than anything else. Um, and uh, the other day, I was just crying, man, because like the stress and and how this disease can hit anybody at any age. It doesn't matter. And uh, that it's just so sad, man. I wish I could do more. But the, the most I can do is just stay put. It's really hard. Um, well, let's let's get finish this up on kind of a happier note. Uh, yeah. One thing we didn't really talk about yet is um, I want to know what you like to listen to. Maybe uh, not necessarily influences, but what what are you jamming to? Like, what do you love to listen to besides your own album? Of <laughs> I'm really sick of my old album. I've jammed it too much because I'm just like critiquing it the whole time. Uh, no, but like, I don't know, man. I, 
I used to really be into rock and metal, um, but I've kind of chilled out over the years. And um, I listen to anything that just catches my ear. I don't know. It, it's really hard. Music has kind of ruined me, like being in music, because I can really tell like what is just, hey, let's just uh, make this a uh, cheap hit. You know, and it doesn't sound genuine, um, you know, but I'm really about messages and music. If I really resonate with what the artist is saying, um, I, you know, or if I can relate to it in any way, I just I'm that person that jams the same stuff not, nonstop. It's really hard for me to accept new albums because like if it doesn't capture me immediately, I'm like, OK, bye. Never again. Uh, so it's bad. I wish I wasn't like that. <laughs> But I'm still like jamming stuff from like 2004, and like, <laughs> you know. Um, but I don't know. Like I've gotten more into in rap and hip hop lately. I really like um, that. Uh, really chill music. I actually really like Post Malone a lot. Um, I really enjoy a good melody over a unique with a unique voice um, on an interesting beat that's like melodic and fun. Um, there are certain new rock bands that I'm getting into. Uh, maybe they're not new to other people, but to me, I've just discovered them. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I love this band. Uh, Japanese rock bands. I'm really into to those. And um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I was listening to Switchfoot, like, from 2006 before this call. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I, I have... Um... I have so much old rock and old metal, and I I grew up with a, a very big love of hair metal, so I've still got that. I, you know, um, yeah, I, I really have a lot of wide ranging likes as well. So no no hate there for any of that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but honestly, I'm giving like these pop stars a chance again. You know, because before it was like ew pop, you know. But um, as I kind of hear them, I mean, they're really talented. Like. Uh, Ariana Grande's voice is just incredible, man. And I've really gotten into her music lately. Um, again, I've kind of been given chances to bigger artists that I, you know, before would never even care about. I was always just so into rock and metal. Um, but it's kind of good to expand yourself as an artist and, and really see what is successful and why is it successful in the music industry. So um, my Apple Music is a tax write-off because I use it as a uh, learning tool for what are the other artists are doing and why. And so, yeah, that's a little secret for you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thanks so much for sitting down and talking to me. Um, and I'm definitely very excited to talk to you again when the new album comes out, so. Yes, I hope soon, man. I mean, it's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know how long this, this, this virus is gonna happen. I know that everybody is behind on schedule, so we'll see. Um, but I do know that when it, when, it, when it drops, it's gonna be big, and I'm not afraid to wait as long as I need to to make it huge. Uh, and have everything in order before it drops. So um, I, 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 I've got plans. I'm always scheming. <laughs> Good. Um, well, anyway, it was great to talk to you. And I'm sure that the fan who requested this interview is going to be very pleased. I'll make sure to yes. get back to, to him or her and let them know that it's ready. So <laughs> yeah. thank you so much, fam. I love you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Steve. I had a great time. I hope to uh, interview again. I would love to when the album drops. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, make sure to uh, keep up with uh, Steve Sandridge and listen to the next interviews on uh, The Metal Shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Take care. All right. Bye, Steve. Thank you.